We got to get a guy up there to check his work. This gutter guy went up on a roof and he looked in the gutters and what he's telling me is that it's going to cost me 1200 bucks to clean them all out because they're so jam-packed with leaves and, and, and acorns and stuff like that. I said, hey buddy, show me some pictures, okay? Where's the video? Just because I got complicated asthma and I had two knee replacements and I can't go up a ladder means that means that you could bilk me and you could put one over on me. We got to get a guy up there. We got to get a guy up there.com is Chicagoland's premier getting a guy up there service. They've been family owned and operated since 1970. And serve all of Chicagoland. Whether you need a guy up on your roof, up on your garage roof, up on the roof of your municipal building, or even just on top of your fridge because you can't reach up there and clean off the dust because it's all filthy dirty, we gotta get a guy up there.com can send a guy to your house today. Today's advertisement for we gotta get a guy up there.com is brought to you by Ritual Vitamin. Ritual Vitamin, fill the gaps in your diet with no shady additives, fillers, or colorant. These two easy to take capsules provide 10 nutrients to support a strong foundation for your health. Ritual is a brand you can trust because of their transparency when it comes to where they source their ingredients and why, and their environmental impact. Ritual, the obsessively researched and transparently made Volti vitamin. Ritual has vitamins to support everyone. They are vegan-friendly, non-GMO, gluten-free, allergen-free, and contain no added sugar. Start the new year off on the right foot with the support of a traceable, high-quality, science-backed product you can trust. Get 20% off your first purchase when you go to www.ritual.com slash botany20. That's www.ritual.com slash botany20. We got to get a guy up there. called Morrow. It's basically a, a wet prairie. Right? Got calcareous, got calcareous mud and a paraphyton that uh, cyanobacterial muck I was showing you earlier kind of helps uh, helps form it. And there's just you can see there's just cypress everywhere and you see you'll see cypress knees. Louie's doing a good job isn't she? You see cypress knees poking up and uh, lots of graminoids but definitely taxodium ascendens is the dominant species here. See there's a nice cypress knee right there. People were saying these were pneumatophores for oxygen. I don't believe that. I think they it's got to do with helping stabilize the trees along with that big buttress on the trunk. There you go. See there's the pollen cones, the cypress dongs, the micro stroboli. Yeah, speaking of which I gotta take a leak. Look at it. Look at those. Look at all the bricks. Look at all the bricks on those cones. Ready to just dump out pollen. A couple weeks maybe a month see you just keep going through the muck and a mire and a sludge and up there you got just look at a tillandsia basket a tisket a tansy a, a tisket a tasket a tillandsia basket this is the paraphyton what's it doing what is this doing right now this algae is growing on top of this leaf blade this cyanobacterial slime yeah, and it's just producing oxygen in the water and releasing nutrients in this poor, nutrient-poor area. 
You like the sludge? You like the sludge and the slime? Look at that. Tillandsia is on everything. Yeah, it's cold. It's nice, chilly water. Look at how many goddamn bromeliads. Look at that. These pond cypress, these taxodium ascendants have such a distinct shape to them, too. I love that buttress. Oh, almost making, almost turning into a little bottle tree. A couple species of Tillandsia here. This is Tillandsia fasciculata. All right, rather large. Look at the buttressing on it. Just like Notre Dame before it burned. Okay? <laughs> Who gives a shit? I'm sorry. No, we should, we should, don't make fun of Notre Dame. Right? Look at that inflorescence about the bust. And then we got Tillandsia balbiziana over here. Look at that narrow red inflorescence. Adapted to Hummer pollination. Look at that thing. God damn. The leaf blades on that kind of recurve. They're, they're not upright like the other one. This, I like this one a little bit more, honestly. Look at that. Yeah, that's a banger right there, man. That Bill Bisciana, that's nice. That's not something you slowly kill on your fridge when someone, you know, buys you one that's uh, put in a seashell at a little trinket store or some shit. Remember what they were doing? I don't think they do that anymore. It's some expressly Florida in the 90s shit. Selling air plants in seashells. Get the fuck out of here. Don't put these inside, man. They don't want to be inside. Not enough light. Not enough airflow. I remember, they're drinking through their leaves right there. They got the trichomes. They're not just using those roots to anchor. Well, I guess these roots are probably sucking up a little moisture. Look at that. See that? Maybe they got a little bit of velum on there. But they're also drinking through those uh, those leaf blades with those peltate trichomes. Damn, look at this. Ha this habitat's blowing my mind. That whole taxodium just covered. Just covered in bromeliads. Mostly fasciculata. You got a wax myrtle right there. America, now Morelli, you got ficus right there germinating on it. So it's going to be a bonsai ficus. It's not going to get that big, but it's going to be, it's, it'll be fine growing uh, in the crotch of this uh, taxodium. Look at this bag. Be one with the muck and the mire. Belbiziana, fasciculata. The slashing. Look at that giant cypress knee. Holy shit. A beast. There's that bright red inflorescence, so showy and conspicuous. Just a bunch of red bracts. And then there's uh, there's the seeds. Plumos attachments to those seeds splitting out of that fruit once it dehisses. That's how they end up picked up on the wind and they end up uh, blowing to a substrate which they can later germinate on. That Bell is something else. That's the, that's the coolest one I've seen yet. Okay, water is very refreshing to be standing in, and it's actually relatively clean. It's just dark, just dark because of the uh, the substrate down there. You can see, but uh, here there's an orchid species I showed you earlier. This is a uh, the genus Bledi. You can see this one's uh, growing uh, on a log and forming a little pseudo bulb right there. So you can see there's just that much moisture everywhere for them to be able to grow epiphytically. Now, supposedly you're not going to encounter gators lurking here because it's a little too cold it being winter time and it's a little shady so they don't have an opportunity to bask in the sun like, like they uh like they like to do but uh anyway here's a uh, nephrolepis is this genus of fern you can see a little bit more greenery providing a little bit more cover growing epiphytically on uh, these buttressed bases of this uh, taxodium nice fern diversity you got a campylonurum right there we got phlebodium right here flip it over look at the story little orange clusters get this little fuzzy rhizome going up there too oh christ louis come on man would you you want to just let me know when you're going to do that please all right so the water's a little deeper now thanks louis and uh we got uh, this really special species of uh, epiphytic orchid epidendrum nocturnum you can see that white flower and the species of that nocturnum, it blooms at night. It's pollinated by moths. Look at that labellum. Jesus Christ. Look at that showy thing. Jesus Christ, man. Nice little landing pad. Probably emits a scent. Maybe not till night, though, when the moths would be out. And there's that ovary. 
you can see it's just adhering to the uh, trunk of this taxodium. Right next to the te uh, Tillandsia belbiziana. Right next to the Tillandsia belbiziana. There's another one right there. And there's a, another one right there. You can see it can get upwards of, uh, it's like three feet tall. That's the dragon, poison ivy, even in the swamp, growing up epiphytically on a cypress snake. Look, you got a silotum here, the whisk ferns. Look at those yellow, uh, yellow sporangia. Okay, so now here we're in this cathedral of, uh, of taxodium, of cypress. You got a nice ficus right there. Right here you got uh, Certipodium punctatum, all right, a member of uh, the, uh, Orchid AC, the orchid family that, uh, look at those massive pseudobulbs. That was uh, heavily poached. It's supposed to be extirpated here, but apparently it's not. There's, But there should be a lot more of them. So it's, it's still pretty tragic. But you can see those are the roots of this orchid going all around that old uh, taxodium stump. So, and then when the flower goes off, it's like, you know, tie-dye red and yellow. Just a, just a big showy, it's super impressive orchid. Yeah, I guess I understand what I reproach. You know, if you're an asshole, I guess I understand it, but uh, totally unethical. Anyway, over there you can see, uh, see just that opening. See, that's a nice little alligator oasis, nice spot to hang out if you are a gator. So we probably won't go over there. They tend to be scaredy cats, but now we're on their turf, so they could easily, you know, get the uh, get Louis, for instance. Okay, look at that Tillandsia. Look at that Tillandsia fasciculata. Not just Humbers, though. Probably quite a few other things pollinate that. It's probably giving up some uh, some decent amount of nectar, at least if you're the right size. Look at that flower spike, Jesus! What a banger! Just growing right on the growing right on the buttress trunk of the taxodium. Here's the Sagittaria. Right there too. You like aquatics? You like the aquatic lifestyle? Oh, it's kind of a shitty flower. I'll show you another one. Member of Moranthiaceae right here, Thalia geniculata, aka the alligator flag, because it's a good uh, good indicator where the alligators might be. Did you hear that, Louie? I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. I'm sorry. I know she's pissed off at me right now. Don't worry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get her some chicken later tonight. But it looks like they, looks like the other ones got hit back, hit by the, uh, the freeze. Died back a little bit. See that? This ficus, this fig is just growing completely, not even in the water. Well, I guess maybe it's got a root coat on the water, but it's just growing uh, using this taxodium as a substrate. Look at it. It's like ten feet tall too. There we go. There's a nice illustration of just what's going on with that uh, single Tillandsia flower. Look at that purple corolla. Pollen coming out. That's all the pollen coming out just below the stigma, that white stigma. Top by a white stigma. Such a showy flower. Such a showy inflorescence. Jesus Christ. Who doesn't love a Tillandsia? You gotta be an asshole if you don't like, if you don't like Tillandsia. You like my pole? It's my friend's pole, actually. That sounded really bad. Never mind. Look at how much, look at how much more this style has elongated on this Tillandsia as opposed to the other. See that? Look at that. Like a little elongated hourglass. Maybe because those anthers are done. I'm trying to avoid outcrossing by getting that stigma, uh, you know, good, good quarter inch above those anthers. But these aren't doing it, you know? Why, why is that? Maybe just because that stigma's not even receptive yet? I don't know. Here's the old... Old ones. Yeah, I know a guy used to breed these, so he would take the, he'd take all the pollen, just put it on his finger, bring it to another plant, try to hybridize different uh, species. Take the pollen from one species, put it on the stigma, and that white bulbous part of another species. Yeah, pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, you got your tiny little utricularia over there. Look, it's going to flower. How about that? Holy shit, that's gotta have a long peduncle. Standing about I don't know what shin deep. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you learned something out of that. All right, I've been, I wish I could do more Florida videos. I've been meaning to come out here for a while, but, uh, you know, we'll have to wait maybe till spring. Anyway, that's all I got. Uh, hopefully you got something out of that. All right, there's not much habitat left on here, but what there is, what is left, is a lot of special shit. A lot of special stuff, excuse me, for the easily offended in the audience. That's all I got. Have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye. There you go, there's that Melaleuca for you. Look at that. Impenetrable. God, what a shit show. It really shows you what invasives can do.